Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my updated wildcard for game week 6. There have been certain injuries that have changed my draft such as the thigh injury to Rhea. So we're going to be covering all that today. If you're excited for the video drop a like down below. Leave a comment have you activated your wildcard for game week 6. Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So starting things off in goal we do have Flecken and Ward. The whole Raya situation is really, really annoying because he, he was just going to be my set and forget goalkeeper for the rest of the season. And now the wild card isn't even in full effect yet. And he's already out my team, which is just, it's really, really annoying because I was just hoping just to have him and that would be it. But that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. I mean, it's still kind of up in the air whether he's going to be available because basically uh, Arteta was asked uh, because he wasn't in the, the squad for the, uh, the cup game midweek. And he was basically asked if Raya was going to be available for the uh, the weekend. And Arteta basically said he doesn't know. Now, that's not great. But also, every time Arteta usually says that, they're fine. Like, he said that about Saka numerous times over the years. And he's always been fine most of the time. So I'm hoping that he's been okay. He's, he's just been given the night off or something. There's no reason for him to be there. If he does have any sort of potential thigh issue, there's no reason for him to be there. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that he is okay. But if he's not and he is confirmed to be out, then I will just have to go with Flecken, which I'm not even happy about. Like, Flecken, yeah, does have some good fixtures, but Brentford have one of the worst defences in the league this season. They haven't kept a clean sheet yet. And not only that, their XGC is actually really, really bad. So against Spurs, they had an XGC, so an expected goal uh, kind of conceding of 3.52. They did concede 3, but 3.52 is ridiculous. 2.17 against City, 1.57 against Southampton, which, remember, Forrest had down to like a 0 0.23. That's the difference in the Brentford and Forest defence. Uh, Liverpool got a 2.65 and Crystal Palace got a 1.17. So they've had over an expected goal conceding of one in every single fixture. And I just don't really want to target the defence, but there's not really any other keepers I'd go for. Out of all the options, the only other ones that I'd maybe think about is obviously just players like Edison or some. But I don't really want to go for, for Edison really. I just want Raya so, so much. He was just perfect for my team. My team was all kind of based around him because now that he's out, I've got to sort out my defenders as well because I still want to go double Arsenal defence. So it's just a massive knock-on effect having this one player not available. So fingers crossed that he is okay. But like I say, if he's not okay, this is going to be what my wild card is going to basically be looking like. So Flecken and Warding goal again. Really do not want to go into the into the uh, the wild card with Flecken, but I, I feel like I'm just going to have to because he is only 4.5 mil. Don't have the best defensive numbers, but there's not much more I can do. So at the back we've got Gabriel Saliba, Greaves, Robertson, and Ina. So obviously I've had to bring in Saliba, which is an extra 0.5 mil uh, because obviously I've lost the I've, I've saved the the one mil going from Rare to Flecken, but then I've lost an extra 0.5 going from a 4.5 mil defender to Saliba but I do really want double Arsenal defense I think that is the right way to go instead of double Arsenal attack you could always go Havertz if you really wanted to but uh yeah with the defensive numbers that Arsenal put up I think it's just it, it just has to be double Arsenal defense so Gabriel is obviously 0.1 more expensive than Saliba but I'd brought him in before he'd obviously had that rise so they're both still six mil for me which is uh, which is really really nice um so yeah i've had to do that obviously to kind of account with the uh the Reyes situation uh greaves is in there as well just as your, your four mil defender he, he is very very close to a prize rise i think there's going to be a lot of price changes tonight so i'm gonna have to properly lock in my wild card draft um kind of overnight Really, I think Thursday and Friday is just going to be like crazy, crazy, crazy changes. There's a lot of players that are close to falling. There's a lot of players that are close to rising. And Greaves is one of those players that is going to about to become a 4.1. I think FaZe is also about to be a 4.2 as well, um, who I'd also kind of wouldn't mind in the team. But uh, there's, I don't really want to kind of flood my defensive lineup with uh, just loads of 4 mil defenders. But either way, Greaves is in there. He's not going to be someone that I play really at all he's just going to be bench fodder uh, i've had to downgrade trent to robertson as well um i, I really don't want to do it I, i'd much rather have trent instead of robertson i think robertson doesn't really offer much now going forward i think it's all about trent and for that extra 1.1 mil he, i think he's going to get you a lot more points over the long run robertson will start you know he will play in pretty much uh most of the premier league fixtures obviously they do have simi as well who can also play but i'd just much rather have trent in that back line uh instead of robertson but be, I, i've got to make the money some were and so I've had to make a sacrifice unfortunately um, so Robertson 6 mil and then I've also got Einer as well for 4.5 it could really be any Forest defender I know that Moreno is obviously 4.4 so you'd save 0.1 on him but he did come off at half time so because of that I think Einer is just I'd rather pay that extra 0.1 mil 
for the kind of solidity in Aina playing every single fixture because he is one of our best uh, kind of defenders really at the club right now. So I don't I don't see him losing his spot at all. And I think he's basically played 90 every single fixture anyway, uh, barring that Bournemouth home uh, Bournemouth at home fixture when he obviously uh, only played 53 minutes but since then he's played 19 every single fixture so I think he'll be absolutely fine you could always go for a, like a center back or something just if you really want it to be properly solidified in that back line but I think Ina should absolutely be fine so that's the back line there like I say a lot of changes really in the defense and the goalkeepers this is all just because of Raya uh, and it's also had knock-on effects into the midfield as well but we're going to go over that now so in midfield I've got Saka uh, who's obviously 10 mil. I've also had to bring in McNeil as well. Rogers and Bumo and Palmer. So four of them are still the same, but I've had to bring in McNeil. I originally had obviously Smith throw in this lineup, but I'd ha I had to make that point to somewhere just so I could kind of still make it all work. And so in order to do that, because as you can see, I've got zero in the bank. You know, I've got absolutely nothing. So I'm really pushing the boat out with how much I can afford with this team. So no Semenyo, no Smith throw. I, I do really like Semenyo as an option. I think he's very, very close to a price rise unless he, he might have already had one actually um, at the time I'm recording this video. No, he's still 5.6. He's very close to a price rise. I think he's going to do damage to uh, Southampton and Leicester. I really do. Obviously, the fixtures after that are quite bad with Arsenal, Villa and City. But then after that, they're absolutely fine again. I think I'll definitely have him for this run here from game week 11 to game week um game week 20 because really the only tough fixture in all of that is united and spurs who both have very very leaky defenses so i'd be absolutely fine just holding on to some from then and he's only 5.6 he'll probably be a bit more by then because he, i think he's going to do well in the first two fixtures but if i wanted to go with a draft like this i just wouldn't be able to afford him smith throw obviously has probably better fixtures over the long run in terms of like after these three but at the same time i think you could probably just bench if you've got like decent attackers you can just bench the menu for for the arsenal villa and the city games and then you've obviously got him already for that really really nice sea of green fixtures from 11 onwards um which obviously is just a really really good it's just a ridiculous run of fixture and bournemouth have actually put up some really really good attacking numbers as well so it's definitely a team that i'm i'm, I'm, I'm obviously going to target at some point uh, it's just whether i target them now or later on down the line but yeah i really like Semenyo. i'd have him over mc McNeil, but like I say, if I wanted to make this draft work, I just wouldn't be able to afford him. McNeil is still a good option. They do still, he does still have really, really good fixtures, and he's going to be playing 90 minutes, which again, with these fixtures happening thick and fast, you kind of want those 90 minute players uh, that are going to be playing. But like I say, they've got Palace, Newcastle, Ipswich, Fulham, Southampton, West Ham, Brentford, United, and then Wolves. So until 14, he's just he's just an easy like hold, and you just play him in the good fixtures. You play him in the bad, you don't play him in the bad fixtures. But yeah, he's such a bonus point magnet as well that when you know, they do get something like Everton get a goal or, or something like that, then he probably will be involved in it. The same as like Calvert-Lewin as well. You, you, you're mainly going to be expecting points from those two there. But at the same time, he is obviously 5.4 mil. So uh, he is obviously a tiny bit cheaper than Smithrow and uh, Semenyo. And then, yeah, Rogers already, you know, picks himself. Hasn't changed there. Uh, I, I I don't think I'd go into this wild card without him. He's just such a good enabler. Same with Mbumo as well. I think he's approaching another price rise, to be fair, which I wouldn't be surprised at. A lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon of Mbumo, but that's because he's just so good. He's got a ridiculous run of fixtures coming up. He's on penalties. Uh, really, really like him as an option. And to be fair, with this draft, I do have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I do have six penalty takers in this draft as well which is quite nice because um they can always get you a goal or, or just extra points from absolutely nowhere you know they can have a terrible game and then out of nowhere they get a lucky penalty from like a handball or something and then boom five points um uh, maybe even getting some bonus as well so that's why penalty takers for me are just so important they can always come good even if they're having a terrible game but yeah boomer is in and then obviously palmer as well i could always drop palmer to a lewis diaz and then obviously have trent instead of robertson um but i just think um diaz i'm not completely sold on i know that he was rested midweek and stuff but gakpo is also a really good option for for slot and i just think that the, the minutes will kind of slowly get worse and i don't think he's going to play every fixture whereas palmer i know obviously he came off on the like 60th minute or something but the game was already won like palmer is the chelsea attacker i would target the most and then it'd be nicholas jackson uh, and jackson could be in this draft as well if you wanted to go for it but i don't i don't really want two chelsea players for the run that they've got coming up because after forest and um, brighton they've got liverpool newcastle united and arsenal which are four pretty tough fixtures again cole palmer is fixture proof though he can score in any of those fixtures i mean especially united and newcastle they haven't been great at the moment but then after that, I want Cole Palmer for the, the run that they have after that because it's Leicester, Villa, Southampton, Spurs, Brentford, Everton, Fulham, Ipswich, Palace, Bournemouth, Wolves. It's just so, so good. Um, and yeah, I, I, we all know what he did last season. We all know what he's already done this season so far. So as as a as an owner of Palmer, I'd be I'd be a lot more um, 
more happy. Yeah, well, I'd be a lot more happier if I owned him. But either way, that's the midfield there. And then up top, we've still got Calvert Lewin, Haaland, and Wood. Uh, Calvert Lewin has already had a price rise. He's six mil now. Uh, Wood, I think, is approaching another price rise. He's very close to 6.2. Him being on penalties has really shut up his kind of, um, I guess, the, the attraction of owning him because, it, like I say, penalties are just. A massive game changer really it's why Eze has gone down in the pecking order a little bit because even though he is still on penalties technically he is sharing them with Mateta so it's not like he's guaranteed that penalty it's like if they get a penalty it's then like a 50 50 if he's going to take it whereas players like Palmer and Saka and Mbumo they are going to take it every single time even if they miss they're still going to be the penalty takers so like I say having six I've got Saka, Calvert-Lewin, Haaland, Wood, Mbumo and, and Palmer so I've got six penalty takers Double Arsenal defence. Robertson is in there as well, which again, I'm not... I don't... I'm not a massive fan of. I'd much rather have Trent. And to be fair, it might even still be Trent anyway. Um, and I'd just have to sort something else anyway. Because you could always go in midfield instead of McNeil. You can go for the... Um, there's the Southampton midfielder that's kind of um, been... I think... I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he has just got... Um, it's Dibbling as well. So you can get rid of McNeil. Bring in Dibbling. He's 4.5. Then I have 0.9 there. I'm just 0.1 off Trent, which is really, really annoying. Because then if I have Trent and then I've got 0.1 that I've got to make up. So that might be, unfortunately, having to drop like I know. Because to be fair, if I was doing this draft anyway, I'd I'd be playing Trent, Saliba and Gabriel every single fixture regardless. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. So I'd just drop I to probably a phase, not have any Arsenal defence uh, and not have any um, Forest defence, should I say. And then that would enable me to do this. So I'd keep Trent in there. But obviously, it's kind of a knock-on effect. Because now that I've got Trent, I lose the Forest defender. And I also lose um, McNeil as well uh, in, in midfield. Which, again, isn't something that I ideally want to do. So I'll probably just go back to, to what I had. But again, this is all depending on if Ray is, if, if Ray is not fit. Which I think... Part of me thinks that he will be okay. At least I'm just, I don't know if that's hopium or something and, and coping. I hope that he is okay. And, and I think that he will be. I think that obviously we should we should get a press conference anyway. So he, he should give us an update there. But if he's like, it's going to come down to like that deadline stream. Obviously we are going to do the deadline stream Saturday morning. And it's going to come down to that. We're going to be waiting for um, kind of news and stuff. And if it is very much like in the air, maybe I just bite the bullet and just go for him anyway. And just hope for the best. And if he doesn't play then I'm just going to have to go into the fixture with 10 players. But going into a fixture, with going into a week with 10 players on a wild card just seems so stupid. So, yeah, I don't know. It might have to be flecking if if, if Raya is definitely out. And I do have an extra free transfer in the bank as well because I rolled last week. So maybe I just save the money in the bank and then just upgrade to Raya, you know, the week after. But he's 5.6, so I'd have to take a lot of... Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a bad situation. But that's kind of the, the, the sort of update on the, the wild card draft. Um, obviously, tomorrow... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think there'll be a video tomorrow because I, I don't think it's going to change much from this unless we get some Raya updates. But if we do get Raya updates, it's just going to go probably go back to what I originally had. Um, then obviously we've got the wild card uh, deadline stream on Saturday as well. So hopefully see you all in there. But thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below. Let's try and 100 likes. Leave a comment. What are your wild card teams looking like? Subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, peace.